The Philippines and China have been in a month-long standoff in the Sabina Shoal, known in the Philippines as the Escoda Shoal. In April 2024, the Philippines initiated the standoff by uncovering the use of ground coral to elevate the seafloor at Sabina Shoal, seemingly in an attempt to establish an artificial island. The Philippines, along with most of the world, suspected that China was involved, given its repeated efforts to create artificial islands around the South China Sea in an attempt to militarize and fortify its illegal claims over the region. The Philippines launched an investigation and anticipates filing an international environmental damage claim against China through its Justice Department. However, the most immediate measure was to deploy its largest and most modern Coast Guard vessel, the BRP Teresa Magbanua, to the Sabina Shoal on what the Philippine government called an extended patrol to discourage any further attempts to make the shoal an artificial Chinese island. This decision has made the Sabina Shoal the latest flashpoint in the West Philippine Sea, and this weekend the Philippines withdrew the Teresa Magbanua from the Sabina Shoal as it returned to Palawan Island in an apparent victory of Chinese tactics. The Philippines, upon discovering an apparent attempt to construct an artificial island at the Sabina Shoal, expressed concerns that the Chinese were attempting to replicate their actions at the Scarborough Shoal, where they had not relinquished their claim to the shoal, but had instead ceded the shoal to the Chinese due to China's assertive actions against the Philippines. Under Ferdinand Marcos Jr.'s leadership, the Philippines has chosen not to concede to China, but to remain steadfast in resisting expulsion from the Sabina Shoal. In order to prevent the resumption of reclamation efforts, the Philippines dispatched the BRP Teresa Magbanua on an extended patrol to the Sabina Shoal. Two other Philippine Coast Guard vessels supported the Teresa Magbanua, ensuring it had the necessary supplies and support to remain on station. The initial Chinese response was to protest the action and claim their innocence. Subsequently, they counter-accused, asserting that the Philippines was responsible for the environmental harm. Later, they adopted a whataboutism stance, asserting that the BRP Sierra Madre's presence and grounding in the Second Thomas Shoal caused environmental damage to the seafloor and coral. Despite these accusations, the Chinese remained relatively silent in the Sabina Shoal due to their focus on the Sierra Madre, which became a significant flashpoint in the region. The Chinese took action to prevent the resupply of the Sierra Madre, eventually resulting in the detention of Philippine servicemen who were attempting to supply the ship. This action also resulted in one Philippine serviceman losing his thumb and physically preventing medical evacuations. The tensions were so significant that both the Philippines and China reached an agreement to prevent any more incidences from occurring. China agreed to allow the Philippines resupply missions to the Sierra Madre, as long as they did not deliver building supplies to the ship, in exchange for the Philippines' advance notification. Neither party acknowledged that this agreement relinquished their claims to the Second Thomas Shoal. As the tensions in the Second Thomas Shoal eased, the tensions in the Sabina Shoal correspondingly increased. The Chinese government became more vocal about Teresa Magbanua being present in the shoal and accused the Philippines of virtual grounding in reference to the actual grounding of the Sierra Madre. If you accept the premise of their sweeping illegal claims in the South China Sea, the Chinese argument is not without merit. The Philippines grounded the Sierra Madre to maintain a manned presence in the shoal, thereby strengthening their territorial claim. By the Philippines' own admission, they assigned Teresa Magbanua to the shoal to establish a manned presence. Coast Guard and Navy ships, both manned and commissioned, serve as these presences due to their internationally recognized sovereign immunity, which protects them from boarding, removal or arrest unless they commit an act of war that triggers the US-Philippine Defense Treaty. The Chinese chose to concentrate their efforts on the Sabina Shoal, deploying their largest Coast Guard ship there to monitor and intimidate the Philippines. The Chinese then initiated efforts to prevent the Teresa Magbanua from receiving resupplies to sustain its crew. The Philippines assigned two and later more ships to support the extended tour, which subjected these ships to interdiction through the use of Coast Guard ships and maritime militia, using blocking tactics, water cannons and ramming, which included an eventual ramming of Teresa Magbanua herself. The week prior to the withdrawal of the Teresa Magbanua, the Philippine Navy reported 70 Chinese ships in the vicinity of the shoal, including maritime militias, Coast Guards and the People's Liberation Army Navy, Pelan. The crew severely curtailed their attempts to resupply the Teresa Magbanua, and despite being seaworthy, the damaged ship lacked essential supplies, particularly food. The ship had to return to the Philippines to replenish its supplies and remove five crew members who needed medical attention. It appears that the Chinese tactics worked to force the retreat from the Sabina Shoal, 
The Philippines have vowed to send another ship to replace the Teresa Magbanua, maintain its presence, and ensure a repeat of the Scarborough Shoal situation. After the Philippine ship left the Sabina Shoal, the Chinese, taking advantage of the opportunity to replenish their own ships, reduced their presence in the shoal from 70 to 11. The Philippines does not aim to replicate the Scarborough Shoal, but it is challenging to prevent a recurrence of the circumstances that led to Teresa Magbanua's forced retreat. The Chinese have demonstrated that they can surge ships to deny the Philippines a presence in its own exclusive economic zone, so the Philippines will have to find options to resupply vessels and maintain a presence in some way. In response to Chinese actions, the United States has extended an offer to the United States Navy to escort resupply missions to Philippine ships. The Philippines have so far declined the offer and stated that it wanted to use its own resources to defend its sovereign rights in the region against China. The Philippines' current tactics are inadequate for the available resources. If the Philippines attempts to maintain a mobile presence in the region, rather than remaining static like Teresa Magbanua, they will likely face ramming. On the other hand, if they remain stationary, they might encounter the same situation and have to retreat due to a scarcity of supplies. The Philippines has the option to negotiate a settlement with China to de-escalate tensions, as they did in the second Thomas Shoal. This approach is unlikely to work because, like in that agreement, the Chinese have moved their tension point to another side. This could be a deliberate effort to wear down the Philippine government, or more accurately, the Philippine electorate, who may grow so weary of the escalations with China that they elect someone more amicable to China, who would then stop the escalations in exchange for giving up sovereignty. The other option is to enlist allies like the US, Japan or Australia to aid in resupply, either through direct escort or interdiction activities, thereby providing the Philippines with the necessary space to conduct resupply operations. Another option is for the Philippines to enlist NGOs, such as Atin Ito or other volunteers, to deploy so many ships that they overwhelm and provide cover for the Philippine Coast Guard to conduct a resupply mission. This scenario would involve the Philippines employing its own grey zone tactics to counter China. China has threatened to arrest and imprison any civilians or fishermen after Atin Ito broke a rolling blockade in December 2023, putting civilians at risk from armed retaliation. Despite facing setbacks in its dispute with China, the Philippines still benefits from its geographic location and its defence treaty with the United States, which create a high deterrence bar for China. China is pushing the boundaries of what it can do short of provoking a war and or US intervention, and the most likely target is to diminish political support in the Philippines against the current government in the hope of getting a government that is friendly, or at least less confrontational, much as it has done with threats, which have largely failed in Taiwan. This is where the world can provide support by pressuring China economically to curtail its actions and not interfere in Philippine political processes or risk sanctions or more international presence in the region, and neither are scenarios that China wants.